I'd like to talk about extraneous solutions. If you haven't seen them before, extraneous solutions to an equation are solutions that seemingly pop up out of nowhere while you're doing the algebra, but when you plug them back into the original equation, they don't actually work. Here's an example of that. Suppose I gave you the equation root 2x minus 1 equals x minus 2. The first thing you could do is square both sides to get rid of the radical on the left. Then we might multiply out the term on the right and move everything over to the same side of the equal sign. This is a quadratic equation, and we could solve it in any number of ways. With this example, we can just factor it. The factors x minus 5 and x minus 1 tell us that the solutions to this equation are x equals 5 and x equals 1. But that's not the whole story. If we go back to our original equation, we can test that we solved correctly by plugging in, say, x equals 5. Root 2 times 5 minus 1 equals 5 minus 2. So root 10 minus 1 equals 3, root 9 equals 3, and 3 is equal to 3. In the end, x equals 5 makes that equation true. However, if we instead plug in x equals 1, there's a problem. We get root 2 times 1 minus 1 equals 1 minus 2. So root 2 minus 1 equals negative 1, root 1 equals negative 1, and 1 equals negative 1. Now, this actually isn't completely wrong. Negative 1 squared does give you 1. So in that sense, negative 1 is a square root of 1. But when we write the square root symbol in an equation like this, we mean to say the positive square root. So x equals 1 is not a solution to our original equation. It's extraneous. Normally, when you learn about this in school, you hear that explanation about negative squaring to make positive numbers to describe why some equations like this have extraneous solutions. But that was always a bit unsatisfying to me. It explains how you might end up with some value of x that doesn't technically work, but it doesn't explain why that only happens some of the time. Sometimes you'll solve an equation that looks extremely similar to the one we just did, but find out that there are no extraneous solutions, or even that both are extraneous. It felt deeply disturbing that the steadfast rules of algebra could sometimes glitch out in a way that you could only detect by going back and double checking. So looking purely at the algebraic rules of square roots wasn't enough for me to understand what was going on with all of this. What I'd like to do here is visualize that algebra and use the graphical picture of extraneous solutions to determine exactly what makes them happen. Let's go back to that equation we solved before. Root 2x minus 1 equals x minus 2. Our algebraic solution at the start of the video interpreted this as the question, what value of x makes this statement true? On the other hand, let's try to think about this visually. Imagine a graph of the function y equals root 2x minus 1. On the same axes, let's also draw a graph of the function y equals x minus 2. You may think we've made things more complicated by turning one equation into two. But drawing these graphs lets us immediately see the solution to our original problem. The left side of the equation will be equal to the right when these two graphs intersect one another. We can see that happening when x equals 5, which was the single correct solution we found before. Well then, where is our extraneous solution x equals 1? It's clear that these graphs don't intersect when x equals 1. The yellow curve is above the x-axis at that point, while the purple line is below it. But remember what we said earlier. Each number can also have a negative square root. If we want to add that fact to this picture, we'll also need to include the graph of y equals negative root 2x minus 1. If we include that new graph, our purple line does intersect it, right at the extraneous solution x equals 1. When we're dealing with square roots, this is what an extraneous solution actually means. It's a point where the line intersects not with our original square root function, but with its negative mirror image. 
While x minus 2 won't be equal to root 2x minus 1 at this point, it will be equal to negative root 2x minus 1. The solution that works when you go back and plug it in is the one where the line intersects the original version of the curve. But where the line intersects with the negative version, that solution is going to be extraneous. With this picture in mind, we can immediately start making graphs for different equations and explain why they do or don't have any extraneous solutions, all without a single bit of algebra. Take root 3x minus 1 equals x. Graph y equals root 3x minus 1. It's negative, and y equals x. I don't even care what the two solutions are, some irrational numbers you'd have to find with the quadratic formula, but I can tell you for certain that neither of them is extraneous. The purple line intersects with the original top curve twice and never touches the negative version. How about if we change the right-hand side to read root 3x minus 1 equals negative x plus 1? Again, our solutions will be nasty, irrational numbers, but we know that this one will work in our original equation, and this one will be extraneous. You can probably imagine right now what the picture might look like if both solutions were extraneous. We might imagine something like root 3x minus 1 equals negative half x minus 1. We can see that the line y equals negative half x minus 1 hits our bottom reflected curve twice, and never touches the original one on top. Therefore, if we solved algebraically, both solutions would be extraneous. Looking graphically at these equations, we can see that it's not just happenstance when extraneous solutions pop up. It doesn't represent a glitch in algebra, but a whole world of connections between the abstract rules of manipulating symbols and the visual forms that those symbols represent. One of the most beautiful feelings in math is when you look at a problem from a slightly different angle, and then the answer becomes as clear as day. And here, by graphing both sides of the equation independently, we got that different angle to tell us exactly when and why extraneous solutions show up. Now, there are still questions to ask here. What if the line doesn't intersect either curve? Is there a way for it to touch one of the curves exactly once, creating only one solution instead of two? What about more complicated shapes for the graphs? There's a whole lot more out there than just linear equations and square roots. I hope you'll be inspired to investigate some of those questions yourself, not because you urgently need the answers for anything, but just to play and explore. If you do, let me know in the comments, and thanks for watching.